Welcome to another episode of Izzy Video. My name is Israel Hyman. What type of microphone should you use with your camcorder? Well, there's generally three different types that people use. You have your handheld stick microphone like this. You have your little lavalier clip-on microphone like this, or like what I'm wearing right now. And you have your shotgun microphone that looks like this. The one type that you probably shouldn't use though, unless you absolutely have to, is the microphone that's built onto your camera itself. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one is the microphone is on the camera, which is way over there, when your speaker is way over here. And you want the microphone to be near your speaker, not on the camera. So you want to get the microphone close to your speaker. Another reason why you might not want to use the microphone that's on your camera is because it'll pick up the sounds the camera makes. If you're using a tape camera, it might pick up the sounds of the tape as it's moving through the camera. Or if you're using a tapeless camera, it could pick up the electronics. It could pick up when you're pushing buttons or moving the zoom lever or whatever. It's going to pick up the sounds because it's right over there on the camera. Another thing is that a lot of times the microphone that's on the camera is sort of an afterthought for manufacturers, so it's not the highest quality microphone that they could choose from. So generally, let's just make the assumption you don't want to use the microphone that's on the camera. You want to use some sort of an external microphone. What I'll do briefly in this video is show you the different options and what their benefits and disadvantages are. One option is to use a handheld stick microphone like this one. You see them all the time because they're so versatile. You see journalists using them. You see singers using them, although they tend to hold it really close. You also see professional speakers using them. And you can hand hold it like this, or you could put it on a stand. And they tend to be pretty rugged, so if you put it in your bag and it gets banged around a little bit, it's probably not going to break it. And also they tend to be less expensive than other types of microphones. And so, of course, that factors into the decision of what type of microphone to get. So handheld microphones have definitely have their advantages. They also have their disadvantages. One of the biggest ones is that it actually appears in the frame. It's a very prominent object in the frame, as you can see here. Now, that might not be bad depending on the type of shot you're getting. However, if you're shooting a narrative, if you're shooting a short film, can you imagine the love scene between the man and the woman and they're confessing their love to each other and the microphone's in there? It doesn't make any sense. That's not going to work. In terms of suspending disbelief, you can't really use a handheld microphone. Another disadvantage is if you're not doing a narrative, if you're doing a normal type of video and the microphone is actually taking up one of the hands here. And depending on the type of shot you're getting, that might not be a bad thing. But once again, if you're shooting a cooking show, for example, how are you going to do cooking with this in your hand? You can't really do that. So you might need something that's going to leave you both hands to use. Handheld microphone wouldn't work in that situation. But is it an option? Yes. Do you need it? Maybe. Depends on the type of video you're shooting. A very popular option, and it might be the most popular because these are such versatile types of microphones, but this is called a lavalier microphone. Sometimes it's shortened to a lav mic or changed to a lapel mic or a clip-on mic. It's all the same thing. A very big advantage is that it's so small and you could just clip it onto the clothing that leaves your hands free to be able to gesture. And so obviously that's a huge plus. Another nice thing is that people tend to be more comfortable with this type of microphone. It's not a big intimidating thing that's right in people's faces. It's just small and people have a tendency to sort of forget about them and so it's more comfortable for the speaker to have this type of microphone on. Also, they are something that you can hide underneath clothing sometimes. So depending on the type of shooting, if you're doing a narrative, you might want to use a microphone like this, for example, to make the microphone totally disappear and yet you still get pretty good audio. It does have its downsides. This type of microphone, because you can forget about it, this is kind of subtle, but because you can forget about it, when you clip it onto the shirt, sometimes people will be gesturing and then they'll just hit it with their hands. And so that means you have to do the segment over again if you don't have another mic that you're using. Another disadvantage is that they're very expensive for the quality. It's not that great a quality and you have to spend a lot of money on it to get not that great a quality usually. And by the way, that takes us to our next disadvantage, which is they just don't sound as good as other types of microphone options usually. However, with all of the advantages and the versatility, this is something that most people probably need to have in their kit. This is a shotgun microphone. It's a very popular option for narrative types of storytelling, short films, that sort of thing. You can just have somebody mount it on a boom pole, hold it above the frame, point it down towards the speaker, and it's not in the frame, but it's still capturing great audio. So that's obviously a huge, huge advantage. Now, another advantage of it is that it actually captures really good audio for the price point. In other words, if I spend $600 on a shotgun microphone, I'm going to get a high level of audio quality with it. However, if I spend $600 on a little lavalier microphone, the audio quality at $600 for a lav is not going to be as high as $600 for a shotgun. So it's really good quality for the money. 
Now, of course, the big disadvantage of using a shotgun microphone is that you need somebody usually to hold it. So if you don't have that person, that could be a problem. If you do have that person, great. If you don't, well, you do have some other options. You could go to a different microphone or one thing that you can do with a shotgun is that you could mount it on a stand using a boom pole and have it mounted above the frame and if the speaker is stationary, that could still work. A lot of my videos that I shoot, that's exactly how we record our audio, using a shotgun microphone mounted on a stand above the frame where you can't see it. That way we capture really good audio quality. Like I said though, if you can't use a shotgun, you do have other options. This just produces, in my opinion, the best audio quality. One thing I wanna add is that you can actually use more than one microphone at the same time, and it's a good idea to do that. For example, let's say you're shooting video of me for a documentary. You could have a shotgun microphone mounted above me on a stand, recording audio of me because I'm stationary as I'm sitting here. And at the same time, you could have a little lavalier microphone mounted on my shirt, picking up audio, and you could have both microphones going into two separate audio tracks on your camera, recording at the same time. That gives you a lot more flexibility, audio options in post-production. What type of microphone should you purchase? Well, it totally depends on the type of video you're shooting. If you're shooting in a wide variety of circumstances, well, you might need to purchase all three types of microphones. I own all three for that reason. However, maybe if you only use some sometimes, maybe you could buy one and then rent the other two when you need them, for example. Totally depends on the type of video that you're shooting. But at least now at this point, you know some of the advantages and disadvantages of these different types of microphones. Hopefully you found this information helpful, and I'll see you next time on Izzy video.